something very funny happened last week, gentlemen. Uh, we ended our part one of, of our 2023 look ahead in cinema. Um, and then the plan was, on the evening, was to then record part two. But as mm. soon as it finished, we all sort of collectively went, I don't really want to do another <laughs> two-hour <laughs> podcast. Do you guys want to take a break and just do it again next week? And we all agreed and said yes. But what we didn't account for was the storyline I'd set up with my sprites. I said mm. I was going to make my way through four sprites and then we took a break for a week and I bloody drank the thing off here. Oh, AJ, I was excited for you to say that you still had your sprites, but you don't. I don't still have the sprites, but I do have two more sprites. So that oh, is so one more than what I said I was originally going to drink on every movie we watched, what well, we're going to watch in 2023 part one. Commitment so I'm over, to the over bit. delivering. Thank I've... you so much, Jeremy. Jeremy's got some. Although water. I do, I've got I, a sparkling margarita. Oh wow! Yeah, I've I've got I've got my my soda stream bottle. Um, <laughs> so I'm not yes. I'm not partaking. Well, let's all open them at the same time. Very nice. Welcome along to the Cold Popsha podcast, everyone, where we're looking at all the movies we're going to watch in 2023 from the end of June onwards. <laughs> Some would say the start of July. Some would say that. Some would. Um, and if, you, if you're confused as to why we're starting there, it's because, as I just mentioned, uh, we did the first six months last week. So check out that episode if you haven't already. But let's get into it, Richard. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the movies that are coming out in the second half of the year. And we're going to take a shot for each film we talk about. All right. <laughs> uh, also, Jeremy's here as well. That's AJ, not that big of a shot. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm going to be so wasted. <laughs> <laughs> so the first film uh, coming out in the second half of the year is Insidious, Fear the Dark. This is, I think, the fifth Insidious film. Fun fact, directed by Patrick Wilson. Yes, he's stepping up to the plate. Mm. I love Patrick Wilson. Do not necessarily love the things he's in, though. Just think he's a good presence. Patrick Wilson is just that enduring guy, isn't he? I mean, like I know him from as um, the only decent Raul ever from the um, from the Phantom of the Opera movie. Um, but you know, <laughs> oh, wow. he's been in a lot of other stuff. But that's where he intersects with my particular areas of interest. <laughs> oh good <laughs> one that i'm the only one who's marked as my most anticipated but jeremy didn't actually mark his so it might be one of his no. we don't know I'm that's the excitement of the podcast is oh mission impossible dead reckoning part one absolutely sign me up i had that title i'm so mad at that title mm. let's talk about that title because we talk about titles a lot on this podcast I am livid because they were going so well. Like, I, I didn't mind. I thought it was cool that they switched to subtitles after the third Mission Impossible mm -hmm. film. But Mission Impossible has always been shackled with this problem that the colon is in the title. Mm -hmm. So you've it's Mission colon Impossible. And then whatever the subtitle has to be shown with like a dash mm -hmm. or something like that whenever it's written down. When you're already like got that many qualifiers stuffed into your title to then make one of them part one is crazy to me and i can't believe they couldn't just think of two cool titles i'm so against part ones and part two yeah like they, they, you could come up with some kind of title that's like dead reckoning and then like you know the flip side of that yeah life affirming yeah reckoning with death what is what does it mean to reckon what's the opposite of reckon oh you know if you just sort of suppose about? life suppose <laughs> like dead dead reckoning is like a, re a reckoning is where you sort of like you have to come to terms with something like you you can't avoid what you've been putting off yeah yeah mm. yeah yeah if you just yeah. sort of reckon so like, you know you reckon it yeah um yeah anyway i just i like it's one of these things as well where it's like all of these titles are mad libs of, mm. of cool adjective cool down protocol like, can't you just think of another one? Why are we doing part one and part two? It's mm. so there's so many words that it's, that title's a whole sandwich. You know, mm. a title should be a, a light snack. Why does a Mission Impossible movie have to be split up into two parts? Like, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. really. <laughs> like, why? It, it can be like, one story, but why do they need to be part one and two? Like, yeah, yeah just have yeah, two yeah. movies that like it's it's well, I mean, didn't um didn't uh quantum of solace end uh pick up like literally just after casino yeah. royale started exactly yeah 
Yeah. Like, same um, death, like man. Are you, are, you, are you better than James Bond? No. Well, probably. But you're not bigger than uh, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, I, I, I can't wait for this film. The... The trailer didn't like, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, cool. This is just more of what I like about this franchise. But yeah, can't wait for this. I mean, the, the this is such a fucking amazing franchise and Fallout was such a good film that if they can, you know, match that quality, holy shit. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. The title aside, I am looking forward to this. And I think... um I think they've worked out a formula in which it's going to be kind of hard for them to fuck it up. Like, mm. it's kind of just, like, come up with cool stunts. And that's mainly what I remember the movies for. I don't really care about the characters that much or or the stories. It's just they, they're still so effective in what they do. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm anticipating it. <laughs> I mean, you didn't mark it as one, but... Yeah, mark me well, down with a big green. This is 100% one of my most I'll mark Jeremy down, but AJ had his chance to, and he did not take it, so... Jeremy had his chance to, he didn't do any of them. Yeah, but he's got children. I've got children, you just don't know about them. He's 60. Tom Cruise is 60. Yeah. Has he officially hit 60? Yeah, surely this is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> not part two well presumably <laughs> part two will be the last one well i mean i in 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 these situations with part one and two movies i firmly believe that they are one movie split into two sections or parts if you mm, will it's very tarantino mm. tarantino-esque of you um one that i've marked as my most anticipated is how do oh, you, you just, live you went full on with these markings Richard. there's i have three in a row and in july Ooh. and then wow none for the rest of the year so i <laughs> <laughs> yeah um well i mean there's a couple of undated ones but yeah uh how do you live this is the new film from hayao miyazaki this is the one that he's yeah. been working on for many many years and is his coming out of retirement to make one last film as sort of a love letter to his grandson or like you know a, a, something to leave him with in the world and there's a, a it's it's one of these interesting things where there's a book called how do you live but i think it's about it's like an adaptation kind of thing where it's like the book how do you live features prominently in the film but it's not an adaptation of the book necessarily right like an adaptation hmm. the movie yeah interesting i mean i'm i'm care this i'll go see this in, in a cinema if it's playing in a cinema my first miyazaki in a mm. cinema and probably my last yeah. um, and that's pretty cool uh so i'm looking forward to it i think it'd be cool yeah the, the, they released like a teaser poster and it has a really interesting it's like a really sketchy sort of design and I know that he, he's he sort of said like he, he used to be able to do ten minutes of animation every month, and now that's one minute per month essentially. And in t October twenty nineteen, the film was converted to be fifteen percent complete. So they just, and they just said, "Oh, we're hoping to finish it in the next three or four years." And wow. yeah, they announced that it will be in Japanese cinemas on July fourteenth, twenty twenty three. So yeah, hopefully they do a dubbed version here soon after that before they like we don't just have to wait oh, sorry a sub version so we don't just have to wait for the dub but yeah i'm very excited to see that i'm expecting it to be a visual masterpiece nice so me too the big debate of july and this year in film really is that on i think I believe july 19th there is going to be a very tough decision for us at the cinema because barbie greta gerwig's barbie starring margot robbie and ryan gosling comes out on the same day as christopher nolan's oppenheimer which stars everyone else <laughs> <laughs> yeah so what what are you guys gonna see first, What's your first? I've, I've marked barbie as one of my most anticipated i haven't marked oppenheimer as one Interesting. Ew. Jeremy, what do you think? Um, well, uh, it, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect matchup because those two films appeal to the exact opposite sides of the two sides of my movie watching, like what makes mm. me excited mm. to watch a movie. Yeah. Mm, right. And so like the meme of it all, and I know that if I wanted to have fun at the movies, I would go to Barbie and I will, yeah. I will see Barbie, yeah. but I will also see Chris. I mean, it's, 
of course you don't have to make a decision on the day and stick with it but i think no you do i think in terms of the zeitgeistiness i would have to see barbie first because people will want to talk about barbie i think well, also Nolan's- like barbie's gonna have a more interesting story like oppenheimer we know he am does become death <laughs> but we don't know what's gonna happen in barbie <laughs> yeah that's maybe right. barbie does become death as well no nah, that'll be ken 100 uh, yeah. yeah i guess like i'm i i feel like nolan has got to earn my trust back after tenet I yeah did, hard. i did not enjoy tenet um whereas greta gerwig directing barbie feel like she's never let me down so i i think i think barbie appeals to me more than oppenheimer because of like my my um attraction to margot robbie the 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 margot robbie no the the like insanity and weirdness and like interesting swings um and this does look like a pretty interesting movie this is not even mentioning the fact that we did an 18 hour podcast about barbie already but like (laughs) I I like I think this this looks like a really successful job of making a movie that feels like it's destined for a female demographic and making it so that it looks like it's actually quite a like I feel Broad like appeal. this yeah, it's, appeal, yeah, it, it's like got four a, quadrants. Yeah, yeah, it, it is interesting because it looks like this is going to be based on the sort of leaks and rumors and stuff that it seems like this might be kind of like a lego movie sort of thing like a very meta very self-aware there's talks mm. of it it takes place in the real world and and the barbie world and and all this stuff but right. it, it's really like you're saying about how it's like it's has this baked in female demographic but then that first trailer that's the 2001 parody mm. it's like well <laughs> you know it's essentially saying well the women are going to see it anyway let's market this to the film bros yeah 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 that's a good way to put it so i'm looking forward to that i am also i am looking forward to oppenheimer i think the i i really i've always been a big fan of killian murphy and it's cool to see him get like a starring role in a nolan film a longtime collaborator um and i i thought the trailer was all right the trailer weirdly made it look like it was like the inspirational journey the inspirational tale of the guy that created the atomic bomb and i was like (laughs) is this not supposed to be like this dark personal tragedy of man you know like like the the true the true uh fall from grace for humanity feels like that's the oppenheimer story um and so that's confusing i think the the very big cast is very intriguing and i like that the cast is from all across the fame spectrum you've got your mid-level celebrities like killian murphy you've got your your a-listers like um, robert downey jr know, ben, ben affleck robert downey jr and and then you've got josh peck from josh drake peck. and josh <laughs> yeah so that'll I, be fun. I, I it is one of these things that i think like barbie's a film i'm excited for oppenheimer is a film i feel You'll obligated have to, watch to watch for the oscars yeah like it, it just it feels like an obligation it's yeah nolan has gone from being this exciting blockbuster for dumb people who want to feel smart to like now the serious you know, you gotta come along. You gotta think about this, and if you don't get it, you know, you can you can go watch your Barbie films. But if you can't hear the audio, that's your own fault, yeah. and I did it on purpose. Yeah, and yeah, Oppenheimer. I don't know the the just the tone of it. Everything just sort of looks like eh. I, like I'm sure I will like it. I much prefer Dunkirk to Tenet or Interstellar, and this is seemingly a lot more in that vein, based on true story. Mm-hmm. He can't sort of rely on having to spend so long explaining the plot and how the you know everything works but yeah i'm just excited for like halfway through when he like starts to play with radiation and the radiation like plays with all of the like electric microphones it means that there's no sound for the second half of the film Mm. it's so authentic to what it really would have been yeah yeah yeah. it it melts the celluloid used to film the film itself (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. it's not my fault it's the subject matter that led me there <laughs> uh so another one that uh none of us have marked as our most anticipated is the marvels yeah i don't know what is i don't, i i oh god i'm just so a marvel film at this point has got to be like super interesting for me to even consider seeing it i think yeah I'm just so over them. I'm so beyond. I cannot be excited for any Marvel film on this list this year. 
I mean, yeah. for me, I think my excitement levels are kind of like the soil in Auckland, and like this Marvel film is like more rain after the last week of rain. <laughs> like, I just, I can't. It's just going to flood away from me. I'm not going to go anywhere near this, and I'm not going to absorb it or accept it into my being. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It, it it is one of these things that it's like it's annoying that the one with the goofy title that's. Yeah, and, and is coming right at the time as the one that's, you know, the female <laughs> centered one that's directed by a woman of color. And it's like, ah, oh, these things would have been so much more exciting a few years ago. Mm-hmm. But now just like bringing all these things in. I guess this is the first one that's really f- featuring someone graduating from TV to film because this is sure. a three header essentially with Brie Larson a- as. Captain Marvel and then Ms. Marvel and Monica Rambeau, who were from Ms. Marvel and yeah, yeah. WandaVision. And so it's going to be interesting to see how how they translate. And I wonder if, because Monica Rambeau, I, I didn't really love her characterization. And I thought that, like her sympathy for Wanda was it just it resulted in a very sort of messy character. And not really given a lot to do other than, like we, the stuff when she was in the, the sitcom in WandaVision I thought she did a great job but then once it was like no I'm just the serious staunch woman that it'll be interesting to see how they alter their dynamic a little bit because I think in Captain Marvel as well she was there, there was the whole thing about like oh she needs to smile more and stuff like that but and then she became quippy later on and it just they it seemed like they weren't sure whether they were allowed to have fun with that character yet and when Ms. Marvel was such a goofy character and they seemed to be adding these lighter elements to Captain Marvel, I'm interested to see what the tone of this film is and how those three characters work together. And if they're, you know, they're going to have a one-to-one sort of translation from where we've seen them previously, because I'm guessing they probably won't unless they want to do like, oh, you know, one of them's the serious one and it'll just be interesting to see the, what, the, what the dynamic they end up going with yeah are they characters who have been designed from the ground up to have an interesting dynamic together i haven't even thought about that yeah that's interesting i, I thought it was interesting as well that you said like this is the this is the one filmed by or directed by a woman of color and how these things would have been interesting um years back and i think it's this unfortunate thing where the the rise of Marvel actually hiring diverse and diversifying their storytellers coincided with everyone getting sick of them yeah. because there's so many of them. And there are people on the internet who will tell you that's causation, but it's yeah. correlation, you know? And it's just so frustrating. And it's Marvel's fault. Like, they should have, from the start, there should have been fucking Ike Perlmutter telling, mm. saying that girl superheroes don't sell toys mm. and shit like that. Like, this needed to be dealt with in a far better way, and I hope that, um, I hope people still see this. I hope this still makes a billion dollars, just so that- I hope it makes a trillion dollars. My dad can't use it as an example of um, going woke and going broke next time we have an argument. Nice. But it's like, I, 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 I don't even think this is going woke, though. Like, hiring someone who's a talented director and telling a story about you know, 50% like characters that are from the 50% of the world that are women. Mm. Like, I just, mm. <laughs> like that's not going woke to me. Like it, it's, but Jeremy, I, there are people on the internet who will be like, you just went woke, bro. Because you uh, said that, mm. that that's how sensitive the, the bow the is. That's, that's oh. how, yeah. <laughs> it's like that you're, uh, you're saying you're saying the same point as me in a way. And that like, it's not, it should, these things shouldn't be woke, No, uh, but they, but one side of a of a certain spectrum has decided they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's I think that it's like um, I think what I'm more interested in in terms of the you know what I'm watching out for in this movie is exactly what you pinpointed, Richard. Like three characters that sort of don't have a natural reason to be together, other than mm. the fact that they are all female characters in this world. Um, however. Just to say this, I'm not anticipating this movie because I don't anticipate Marvel movies, you know, same as Ant-Man and the Wasp, whatever it was, Quantum Mania. Um, mm. But, I mean, just like I wasn't anticipating Shazam, I don't think. But then as it got closer, I actually got started to get excited 
by what I mm. saw of it. And because I love Zachary Levi so much. Um, <laughs> 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 that was Man, so, that's... so we released that. Thank God we didn't um, keep recording last week. It would have been even, there would have been like, so like we, did we get in before the Zachary Levi tweet or was it? Just it was, after. Well, I think it might have been just I after. Saw, I saw it on Saturday. I saw everything about Zachary Levi on Saturday morning and I was yeah, like, right. <laughs> 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 For those who didn't listen last week, Jeremy very innocently, and you know, not to blame, not not to not a not a sus move at, at the time, just was like, oh, I love Zachary Levi. I'm looking forward to Shazam too. And then he was like, <laughs> Hey everyone, this is a wise thing to tweet. <laughs> hey, Pfizer's killing us all with their vaccine. I was like, hmm, yes. As someone who did comms for the vaccine rollout, I tend to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so good but yes as i was saying i I think you know i'm not anticipating this at the moment look if it gets closer to the time and the the previews look really good and then there's good buzz around it hey i could get really excited to watch this but Mm. just the fact i mean it used to be that marvel releasing something new was just like oh absolutely i'm gonna go see that i have to see that that's gonna like that's gonna define conversation around movies for like the month that is out but they've just Mm. they've they've lost that now and it's okay sure Mm. Mm. moving on to august now we've got a film called teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem jeremy you're a tmnt millennial so this must mean a lot more to you than it would to a spongebob millennial well i was not allowed to watch teenage mutant ninja turtles because (laughs) it had karate in it um which was a... <laughs> yes oh, i wish you'd let us guess like what innocuous thing to, <laughs> to your parents, yeah, yeah, parents yeah, yeah. deem yeah. to be the devil <laughs> um because uh karate has its roots in shinto buddhism or so far as my parents mm. thought it did <laughs> um so yes <laughs> yeah i was so also so I, I was also not allowed to watch um uh captain planet because it contained um new age mythology um in mother guy um so all ah, right of course yeah. well it's lucky you didn't watch that jeremy because if you did you'd be a bloody pagan wouldn't you <laughs> I'd be, you'd I'd have be, grown up to be a pagan i'd be doing ceremonies uh just just like all the all the normal kids who who watched it uh grew up <laughs> and started doing uh nightly rituals around the moon oh my god so this so is funny. it's an, an animated film it is mm-hmm. produced by seth rogan and evan goldberg and yeah i think this could be fun apparently it's going to focus more on the teenage aspect it's going to be a a little less on the mutant so they're just going to be slightly big regular turtles (laughs) but and (laughs) seth rogan has said that they are casting teenagers as well in the Ah. rest so that's I, this movie snuck up on me i'd never heard about it until like maybe a month ago and then when i, was like, when yeah, I had my course, drink this, bottle yeah this movie's coming out this year but interesting i wonder if it'll be good i wonder if it'll be a unique art style do you reckon we're going to get the spider-verse like yeah stop i think motion, i think we'll low, get some low kind frame of fun, rate. yeah <laughs> that's what i would do yeah any of you guys see the mig no no but i know there's a mig 2 coming out yeah what's it called the Meg 2, it's Return to the Deep. It's called Meg 2, The Trench. They dropped the the. <laughs> well, they just put it somewhere what? else. <laughs> is, it in, is it in the set in the Marianas Trench? Uh, let's have a look. It doesn't say. But Ben Wheatley is directing, interestingly. Who Ben Wheatley did like Free Fire, High Rise. One of these is sort it, of... Oh, no, that's Ben Whitley sure. is... Uh, oh. Which, which sorry, thank you, Ben Wishaw. Thank you. Mm. I love that you know what I'm. I know that I love that you know what I'm wrong about, and you're like, no, no, no. You're thinking of this, and you're wrong. <laughs> it's like he knows you better than you ever knew oh. yourself. Yeah, it's a little bit of sing star pop for you. Um, yeah, he, he's one of these sort of like I know. I remember High Rise and Free Fire when they came out. They were two films that people were like Ben Wheatley is the future of cinema and now he's doing this i don't think i've seen any of these movies. i haven't seen them either but they were like they were quite big at the time on like reddit and stuff but it's I, I, yeah i i thought he was like a high artist cinema kind of guy and so seeing that he was attached to meg too without having seen any of his films i was like oh damn 
Interesting. Well, I probably won't see this. But strike this. This will not be a movie I will watch in 2023. Well, there you go. I watched the Michael you... Bay uh, TMNT. So uh, the the franchise is ruined for me forever. <laughs> We're talking about a different. We're not film, even Jeremy. talking <laughs> about TMNT, Jeremy. Oh my gosh. We're talking about Meg. Oh uh, yeah. I'd see. I I I started looking into the Marianas Trench, and then I got distracted by something else. <laughs> yeah, anyway. <laughs> Then you, then you saw a turtle and you were like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> turtle. Turtle. So are you guys excited for this year's big theme park attraction adaptation, Haunted Mansion, starring Rosario Dawson, Lakeith Stanfield, Owen Wilson, Tiffany Haddish, Winona Ryder, Dan Levy, Danny DeVito, Jamie Lee Curtis, and... Jared Leto. Yeah, I think this will be good, but I just I don't know that much about the Oppenheimer story, so I don't know if I can be excited <laughs> about the animation of it. This stars everyone else who's not in Oppenheimer, yeah. it seems. I was just gonna say, why is this not coming out on October thirty first? Or at least a week of, like why well, because then you'd only have Halloween one release? day to watch it and it'd be relevant. <laughs> <laughs> I I think I, it'll this be because they want be. it on Disney Plus on, on October first. I I uh, yes. I think this could be really good. I don't know anything about it, but I, th- I like the cast. And I don't know, Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one, was a good enough movie to show me that it's possible to make good theme park movies. And the other Haunted Mansion movie's not very good. But, like, I don't know, this could be fun. I could see how this could be franchisable. I could see how it could be um something really unique and different that at the same time is comforting and warm and harkens back to a bygone era of family cinema you know i think it could be good yeah the issue issue with haunted mansion is that it too scary like pirates the caribbean had almost no story but it had some story as a ride the haunted mansion like i mean I've, i've been through it three times it really okay. has very, very little storyline. <laughs> or at least it did in the 90s when I went in there. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, essentially, they're just taking the name Haunted Mansion and you can just fill it with whatever story you want. And I guess that's exactly what they did Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I'm okay with this. I think, like, it's just, it's, I, I think we need to open the door back up to, like, big pulpy blockbusters that are about familiar set pieces and familiar, because it's like we closed off the door to that. And only let superheroes in for 10 years, guys. For 10 years, we are responsible for this. We <laughs> am become death, destroyer <laughs> of pop culture. And I don't know, like, like I, I, th- I think ho- scary kids movies are always very charming to me. I think, I think it's maybe one of the most important types of movie that gets make, made because I think, t- like, teaching kids how to watch movies um you know like if if the movie is scary it's it's like a new experience for a lot of kids i think like watching gremlins when i was eight years old was like cool i feel like i'm growing up a little bit and i think i think this could be something like that it could be like a really instrumental people um instrumental movie for for the youngins the children that i care about so much in the world AJ, are you excited for a new film from Neil Blomkamp starring <laughs> Jerry Halliwell, Ginger Spice herself? Sorry, what? <laughs> I, what? I am now. <laughs> yeah, th- that's right. Neil Blomkamp's new film, Gran Turismo, an adaptation of oh, the game, the, is st- yeah, right, starts the Jerry Turismo Halliwell, game. I just found out. Jerry Halliwell's in it. Interesting. She plays the main character's mum. Right. This is a left turn for his career, I, and I dare say he deserves to be lumped with something like this after- I was like, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry, you, you used the word career there. Um, so w- where has that been recently? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you made a bunch of... Sh- so Okay, so Neil Blomkamp made District 9. Legitimately, one of the best movies of probably the last 20 years, right? Like, <laughs> I love District 9. I think it's so good. And then he made Elysium, which I don't think was terrible, but a lot of people didn't like it. And then he made Chappie, which I think is one of the worst movies it's I've ever the seen. the original most disappointing film yeah. exactly and the and then between chappie and now he's made a bunch of short films which get this jeremy were not well received <laughs> like, <laughs> what? It's like, it was like his own what? project he did like mm. he like started a project in which he could make short films and apparently they're all shit uh and so at the on the, on the one end like 
a Gran Turismo movie, a game series I have zero affection for, being given to um, a director with this this these this stuff under his belt, I'm like, yep, whatever. I mean, Gran Turismo, what is? It's just a racing game, yeah. right? So this is presumably just going to be a movie about races and be a very very like yeah. loose connect connection to the game he was because remember he was going to be doing an alien film for a lot uh, alien mm-hmm. awakening for a long time and then he was going to be doing a robocop ignore all sequels film but then it turned yeah. out he he made a supernatural horror film called demonic during the covid19 pandemic and get this it uh, wasn't very well received <laughs> <laughs> just what a what a disappointing director Mm. right like you watch district nine and it's like this man is going to be the future of cinema in 10 years and then over 10 years later it's like he made a movie called demonic i've never heard of oh my gosh yeah (laughs) yeah a film coming out called challenges which is a a tennis romantic comedy uh directed by luca guadagnino who made call me by your name and most recently bones and all wow. it stars zendaya and josh o'connor as the the couple uh, trent reznor and atticus ross are doing the score oh wow so this is a this is a a run for the oscars then, <laughs> yeah i guess it's, it's like <laughs> but yeah it's so funny that it's like he's you know following up this cannibal horror rom-com road movie mix of genres he's now like remaking wimbledon <laughs> wow w- sorry remaking wimbledon mm. he was making a joke oh right okay but it's it's a tennis romantic comedy and i thought what's a tennis romantic comedy and of course wimbledon yeah, 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 yeah. was the first film that came to mind because it's thank you for explaining the joke <laughs> look that's a very very broad genre the what's tennis the, uh, rom-com there yeah, is another so tennis rom-com right <laughs> oh what no about, you search um, tennis rom-com it, it just says wimbledon <laughs> Isn't but isn't there like something set oh, match, match point. or was that Ma- the match point? Yeah, match, yeah, yeah. There you go. Thank you. Yeah. So, so your point, Jeremy, is as Richard could have said match point instead of <laughs> when he made his oh, look, remaking joke. Look, the, uh, the point is that this is now, I think, a de facto trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So there's Blue Beetle is the superhero movie coming out this year. It's the penultimate film in the DC EU before they. But kind of, yeah, but weird. not really. It's weird. James Gunn gave a big, he sort of released his slate the other day. And apparently Flash, which we've already talked about, resets the timeline. And then we still have Blue Beetle and Aquaman, the gods or whatever it's called, um, and the Lost Kingdom. And we, and those ones are kind of part of the old universe, but also kind of part of the new one. It's it's mm. confusing. Yeah. This is this has got such an uphill battle to climb because it's part of a series we know is being rebooted and it's a movie that it's a character nobody knows about or the mainstream doesn't know about. I think it's this this is this is gonna be like I don't know, I reckon this is gonna this is gonna be like Morbius levels, Black Adam levels of of maybe not Black Adam sized, but like I don't think this is gonna be very good. I, I, I think this one will be quite good. I think it's like it's yeah, no, I, I think this one You're is. really selling me with your confidence and how good you think it's going to be. No, I mean, I, I don't know. I just don't really have any reason to believe that it's bad. Mm, I just don't like blue things. I just yeah. don't have Especially any reason needles. to believe it should exist. I, I just yeah. like, why? Why Why does this exist? Why is this happening any, to me yeah, now? Any, any, any pre-DCU uh, reboot movie now, I'm just like, wrap it up. Come on. Come on, wrap it up. They're being evicted. These movies are being evicted and we're still going to see them. That's funny you should say that because so this is actually about like a Mexican superhero. Um, right. So it's, it's funny to be like, they're being evicted. <laughs> and <laughs> Because what? Because well, Mexicans get evicted? Well, I don't know. It's, it's just like, a, it's a, a, you know, it's a racism thing, you know. You want to. Right. You know. Am I being racist or are you being racist? I'm confused. I'm just saying racism exists right but yeah th- th- that's well, the sort of thing and, right. and that aj you're doing a racism <laughs> right now yeah okay. but i think okay. that, that well, it's I one of these things that, that it looks like this is a passion project for a lot of people involved and i think one of these things that you know obviously is going to be very widely beloved and accepted by a a group of people and 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if it becomes a crossover hit or if it's one of these things that largely bombs, but, you know, does really well in Mexico kind of thing. Right. Well, you know who else had a lot of passion for a, a certain project? Was one Dwayne Rockefeller Johnson, wow. uh, who made Black Adam. <laughs> you, yeah, you're right. So there's a film that I, I put on here because this is like a mark your calendars, mark the rest of your lives, because I think this is going to be an important film. Is and not an important and like an actually important way, but there's untitled please don't destroy film so this is a film about three friends who seek to turn their lives around by finding gold buried in a nearby mountain now this is the debut film from the guys that are they're this comedy trio on saturday night live and they've kind of followed in the lonely island's footsteps there's they started on tiktok and they were one of the first sort of big gen zification of saturday night live and so right. They've a lot of, you know, very sort of finger on the pulse sketches and stuff like that. They are quite funny. It's, I, I probably preferred them more on TikTok than the stuff I've seen of them on Saturday Night Live. But this is going to be the next generation's hot rod. This is going to bomb. Right. And, but people for years are going to be talking about how this film defined their sense of humor. That's my bold like yeah cool. statement <laughs> what's for it, this what's year it called again it's please don't destroy is the name of their comedy trio like oh, the lonely right, island right. and it's just untitled please don't destroy film uh, hell yeah i'm on board let's get some generational voice comedies i think i think that's a great thing to aim for that's a great thing to shoot for <laughs> but yeah it's it's just and it made like a, presumably it'll get dumped on stream or something like that because we don't really i mean maybe the, with the clout they've got from saturday night live and, you know, I'm sure it'll have some hilarious famous people cameos and things like that. But, yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting because comedies don't tend to do well in the cinema. That's, um, you know, that's the, the, the death of the mid-budget movie that everyone keeps talking about. And yeah, it, it's funny yeah. reaching into TikTok to find voices to then put onto a movie-length platform mm. when, like, famously you know basically tiktok is rewiring the the attention spans and brains mm. of mm. people who use that platform and so it's like yeah. hey people who use this platform that's inherently short form and i just yeah i just don't understand why i mean obviously it's going to happen because you know like i mean aj was like yeah yeah let's have a let's have a generational thing let's do it and i'm like well it's going to happen because people get older <laughs> and <then> new <laughs> people need to come in all the time so at some point it's you know the the generation is going to is going to shift anyway but it's just interesting to me that like yeah i guess having a having a, a team of people that do short form comedy um mm. then try to put it on a movie length platform is just it's going to be really interesting to see how they do it you should do, AJ, like a how different generations quote their favorite comedy and it'll be like, cool beans, cool, cool beans. And then a quote from this film and then yeah, I know like, oh, you said it, Anus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I respectful counter to your concern, um, Jeremy. Is that I actually reckon- think you're fat and dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I, reckon, I reckon what you're saying is probably very similar to what the previous generation said about millennials right like i reckon when millennials started getting on snl and making films i reckon there would have been gen x comedians who are like the voice is too frenetic it's too quick it's too fast paced it's too funny these millennials are too talented it's too funny (laughs) Um, and and i think that um what what I, I think it's a valid thing to to bring up that, that that TikTok's a short form, but I also think that is a that is like a symptom of that specific medium. And I think the whatever voice this new generation of comedy will have, I think it's one that we probably won't know until we see it. We probably Ooh. won't understand it until we see Fuck, it, that's and deep. it's probably like unfathomable until we see what this type of comedy looks like when it's successfully put into long form. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. What do you think, Jeremy? Have I left you speechless? The the, no, the you, teacher you just, sat down. You <laughs> just the literally, class all clapped. You just literally said what I said, which is it will be really interesting to see how they do it. I think you said I hate children and the old ways were better. Famously. That's famously. Mm. That's what yep. I heard. <laughs> which one of us has a thousand children, Jeremy? It's me. 
You only have two. Yeah. That tells me you hate them. If you really love children, you would have had at least ten by now. Well, um, actually, there's a, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> well, now seems like as good a time as any to let you guys know that. <laughs> so there's a no. Blumhouse horror movie coming up, starring John Cho and Catherine Waterston. Which I call They Listen, which I only bring up because it's directed by our friend Chris Whites. What's it called, sorry? They Listen. They Listen. I thought you said They Listen. Like, without they. Uh, like worthless. Um, they finally, listen. a world that hasn't gone woke. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine in a world with no pronouns. <laughs> They they listen is a very compelling um, title. It's mm. very um, they live or mm. get out or that sort of thing. Mm. I wonder if this will be like, uh, I mean, it's, and it's Blumhouse. I wonder if this will be the next big um, social thriller, the next big elevated horror with like kind of a conflicted <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. center of it. Mm. It's about it'll like, be like it's Chris White's like trying to make right for American Pie, and it's like actually you, sh- you should spy on your friend getting changed. Yeah, yeah or, or it's it's like like the the horror at the center of this horror movie is like a metaphor for like um, gentrification, and then the end of the movie is like they got to blow up a poor city. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, blow up it's a- not even related. They don't think about it. It's, it's an unrelated plot beat. <laughs> Uh, so now we're into September. The Equalizer Three. Are you guys excited for this? I don't didn't know there was an Equalizer Two. You could have told me equalizer. the first Equalizer came out in nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, okay, there's stars Denzel Washington, but it's no. yeah, and directed by Anton Fuqua. It's yeah, the first one came out in twenty fourteen. Wow. Well, I'll be. Yeah, I have. I have not seen an equalizer and I am unlikely to see an equalizer. <laughs> Fair enough. Speaking of sequels, none of us will watch The Nun 2. That's the Conjuring spin-offs getting a sequel, so. Dude, our days of not having done the Conjuring franchise are numbered. Could be this like, October. This is this could, it could be this October. <laughs> mm. Uh one that I I didn't even realize was happening until I was putting together this list is A Haunting in Venice, which this is This is the new Hercule Bauer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So this one stars what, another one a year a year away oh, yeah. from the previous one. Yeah. Oh my god. So first gosh. one, t- second one took five years. This one took a year. So it stars Kenneth Branagh, Kyle Allen, Camille <laughs> Cotton, Jamie Dornan, Tina Fey, Jude Hill, Kelly Riley, Michelle Yeoh, Emma Laird, Ricardo Scamaccio. Wow, the cast is already out. God, that's crazy. That's so funny. That's like the the first sequel took five years to make, and look how good that turned out. Well, we've <laughs> sharpened our craft, so now we only need a year to make. This. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. I mean, you got- the the cast the cast seems other than other than Michelle Yeoh, hmm. um, and there's one other name that I was Tina like, Fey. oh yeah, the cast really does not seem to be at the same level as the other two. Well, even the first one, like, the cast has just been yeah, slowly twiddling. Every yeah. cast is half as famous as the uh, last yeah. movie's cast. Oh, yeah. It's that's probably good, not, we... not, not true, but... Mm. It, it feels true. It definitely feels true. It feels true. And that and isn't that truth in the, at the end of the day? Isn't that what it's real truth is? It's something truthiness. that feels true. Truthiness. <laughs> I think all the time about that clip from the the, the Trump era mm. where that woman on Fox News was like they're talking about different methods of 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 taking in medicine and one of them was like I think you pick the science that works for you and you stick with that and everyone's like yeah 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 and then smash cut to John Oliver going no that's <laughs> not how it works at all the I'm gonna read out a cast list I don't want you guys to see if you can tell me what this film is. Okay. So you've got Megan Fox. Okay. Curtis 50 Cent Jackson. Oh, I was about to say, I don't know any celebrities named Curtis. Mm. And then you said 50 <laughs> Cent. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Andy Garcia. God, what's he been in? Ico <laughs> Wise. Mm. The last any... thing I can remember Andy Garcia being in was the Oceans movies. <laughs> yeah. Any guesses? Who was the last actor, sorry? Uh, Ico Wise. Ico Wise. He's the guy from The I Raid. I don't know who that is. Okay. Randy uh, Couture. Can I guess the. Oh, Randy Couture is in it. Oh my God, this is going to suck. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. Can I guess. 
Oh, okay. Is this Richard? Is this a little film that you could say um, you could probably watch it and then immediately delete off your hard drive, or maybe if you had a film reel of it, you could immediately burn it. Burn after reading too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's burn after reading too. Would you describe this film as somewhat? I don't know. Expendable. How did you do that? <laughs> yeah, it also stars Jason Statham <laughs> and Sylvester Stallone, and. Mm. Yeah, it's The Expendables 4. The, the the high watermark of like, we get the biggest action stars in the world in our film has, has really fallen when Andy Garcia is joining oh your gosh. lineup of like age, aged action heroes. <laughs> and 50 Cent, like noted, noted action star 50 Cent. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, what was Randy Couture's character name in that series? It was like- Toll Road. Toll Road. I was going to say Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll probably watch this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I mean, it looks like crap. I'll probably watch it. So I remember our takeaway from watching them for film franchise Fortnite was like, these movies are made for boomer dads mm. but there's actually nothing wrong with that. Like, this is just a serviceable... It's, yeah, it's, it's not like, like boomer... It's not yeah, it, it's fine to just have movies that aren't made for you as not as long as you're not like recruiting them and it's not like an yeah. evil movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So one film now that we've actually got a release date for, but it's been on our most anticipated list for a few years now is Next Goal Wins, the film from Taika Waititi. Wow. Which, yeah, now does not star Army Hammer. Apparently he had more of a cameo <laughs> role and it was reshot with Will Arnett to be more of a role but yeah it stars michael fassbender as thomas Ron- ronjan who was tasked with I turning know that fassbender yeah, he's the, the main shit. character he's tasked with turning the american samoa national team considered one of the weakest football teams in the world into an elite squad and i believe this is michael fassbender let's have a look at his filmography because i th- yeah, this is his first film since Dark Phoenix. All right, so imagine you're Michael Fassbender, right? Mm. And um, you you start you 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 star in Doubt and and movies like that, and people are like, this doubt. man, isn't he? Shame, no. What's you he mean? Shame. 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 <laughs> shame, I mean shame. <laughs> Big part of it. The you other thing that shame. plagues you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and you're like, man, this guy's the best. Like, like, and like, people are being saying, <laughs> yeah, like, this, people, this guy's the best. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the best working actors today. You get straddled with a X Men series of diminishing returns. You star in what looks like a great <laughs> Nordic noir that ends up being like widely regarded as one of the most dog shit releases mm. of the last like twenty years. The Snowman. Uh, and and yeah, and you and so like. You're you're desperately trying to find a role that is as good as you are an actor, right? That's that's your goal as Michael mm. Fassbender, and you go Taika Waititi, a director, infallible, only has hits. I want to work with him. infallible, and then you get on his movie, and while he's making your movie, he makes this horribly received Thor friend, Thor movie a, a horrible movie in a franchise no one ever says anything bad about and you're like oh god I just want to I just want to win <laughs> but out of, I mean good good point and very funny but I just want to go back to the fact that you said he was straddled by a franchise <laughs> when you actually meant saddled <laughs> But he was straddled wow. by the X Men franchise. I thought he said shackled. I thought he I said no. I don't say any of these words. I reckon I spoke straddled. eloquently and frankly with grace and with uh, class. That's how I remember. I'm, I'm looking please, forward please to how you re, re, re-record and then edit yourself saying saddled. Into that. <laughs> <laughs> it'll sound like this. It'll be like saddled because I'll have <laughs> cut out. <laughs> Tra- you, you which I can do. I know how to do that. You can't be bothered put taking the the LA just I'll oh, just leave the S in, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the that's September. I mean I'm excited for next goal ones. It'll be interesting to see how his next non Yeah. I don't think Taika Waititi deserves to be written off just yet. Yeah, That's but my it, it is interesting because it stars like Oscar Kitely and David Farne and like these people that are very sort of household names in New Zealand for their style of comedy. And then now that Tiger's got the whole world looking at him, seeing how, like, seeing those people. Because, like, I mean, David Farnham is fucking hilarious. Oh, that, they, they, these guys are probably, like... Steal the show. Be skyrocketed to fame yeah. after this movie. Everyone be like, 
oh my god this guy named Os- Oscar Kitely is the funniest actor in the world <laughs> and it'll be like well yeah we've seen him we've, he's been on TV for 25 years yeah that's September all done we're now on to October where we're kicking off the month the month of horror with horror Craven the Hunter god this is gonna suck this is gonna be so bad what faith does anyone have in the in the sony spider-man franchise yeah. anymore they are just Wait, desperately is, clinging yeah so this is this Craven is the Spider-Man? hunter is you put, Craven the hunter is one of spider-man's classic rogues he's a big game hunter who although they're, they're doing like apparently the take on they're doing like a he's a conservationist twist on craven the hunter and okay. he's an animal lover and a pat- protector of the natural world because i think it's like in the comics it's like his you know the the the, the true thing he wants to hunt is spider-man but yeah the aaron taylor johnson is playing the the lead character that's so i couldn't believe when he got cast mm. in that role i was like you've got so, like a character people have wanted to see on film for years and then you cast aaron taylor johnson mm-hmm. seems like such a boring decision why don't you like aaron taylor johnson i think he's a good actor i i just think it's craven the hunter is an incredibly charismatic character oh, and i right, don't know okay. if aaron taylor johnson does charisma particularly well mm-hmm. <laughs> right 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 so you, and, like it's and, a kind of a robert a robert downey jr kind of level of charisma desired for that for that kind of role. I think so. Well, I mean, very, interesting choice of actor. He's a very, I would like, Craven the Hunter is, um, from what I understand, is like a, a Russian, like, yeah, I don't know, madman. So, uh, like, Sergei Kravinov. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess, look, I, all of this aside, Sony continue to try and make Spider-Man movies in which Spider-Man is not a part of it, even though he's often an intrinsic part of that character's origin story <laughs> and this is no different and it's also this annoying thing i bet the people who are in charge of the mcu spider-man movies are so pissed off at sony for like using all the heavy hitters mm. and so like because you, you like unless it's a big character like batman you can't have two craven the hunters in well in, in yeah the same like, pop cultural uh, moments yeah. right yeah, yeah. Like you can't do that, and so like now we what we're not going to get a Tom Holland versus Craven mm. movie that I'm sure would be better than whatever this movie's going to end up being like. Yeah, damn, you've you've stolen it from us. Yeah, how dare you? So there's a film coming out in October as well called True Love. This one's directed by Gareth Edwards, who made Godzilla and Rogue One. And do you know? When you were li- listing off the cast for Expendables 4, mm. I was going to say, can I guess the director? And I was going to guess Gareth Edwards for some reason. Oh, interesting. I don't know why, but that's so funny that he is actually doing a movie this year. Yeah, so yeah, he hasn't done anything since Rogue One, and this will be his yeah, fourth yeah. film. So it's a sci-fi film starring John David Washington, Gemma Chan, Alison Janney, Ken Watanabe. It was cool. shot in Thailand. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, should be interesting. Sounds cool. I would, That's a like, really interesting sounding cast. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, Gareth Edwards is makes good films, I guess, good looking films at least. And so, yeah, I'm excited to see what he comes up with. But I think, I think this has the potential to be a sort of big cultural moment movie potentially, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. So David Gordon Green, who did the Halloween, the new trilogy he has and ignores all sequels exorcist film coming out this year there's not much detail about that other than there's that i can understand doing this for halloween Mm. but exorcist feels like it's such a specific kind of story i don't know what benefit there will be to doing an ignores all sequels sequel Mm. like it just seems so like pointless like I don't know. I haven't seen any of the exorcists. Oh, so, sorry. So. It, sorry. It says, while the film will retroactively affect continuity of the franchise, all of the previous installments will still remain canon to its premise. That sounds like they don't want to piss off anyone by saying it ignores it. Yeah, that's interesting. It's intended <laughs> to be the first of three to... new exorcist films and the sixth installment of the hell? exorcist franchise. That's so weird. <laughs> so, I think that's so weird. <laughs> So it's about Man, the IP father bank, of a possessed IP child. Banking sucks. <laughs> the- that's, yeah, that's the thing because it's like it's like with Halloween, there is so much stuff in that story that makes sense to franchise. I feel like Exorcist is so self-contained. It's so like 
I, like I, I'm pretty sure even the sequels like focus on relatively different isolated stories. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but like I don't know. It just seems like such a random call to pick this franchise to make a new trilogy out of. I guess. Yeah. So this is Alan Burstyn is coming back as Chris McNeil, who's uh, is that the? No, she's the. Is, no, that's Regan. M- yeah, she's the mother of Regan. Is the girl who played Regan coming back? Uh, it doesn't look like it. The Linda Blair. Oh, well, at least they got the actress. At least they got the actual actress, unlike uh, te- Texas yeah, Chainsaw yeah. Massacre, which <laughs> just got a new actress. It's so pointless. God. Yeah, the, the, it's about a father of possessed child desperate for help goes in search of someone who has had similar experiences. Chris McNeil, the father, is played by Leslie Odom Jr. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, okay. Yeah. I really like Leslie Odom Jr. All right. So, Jeremy, a film that you, by October, might need to go see is... Oh, give it to me. Give it to me, Richard. War Patrol, the mighty movie. Oh, yes! Yeah, well, I will have a four-year-old by then. Um, and wow. Yeah, I'll have a four-year-old. Um, and maybe, is it? No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I... Actually, that's a good idea. And is it, as you say, October? Yeah. Oh, if only it was September, because then I could take her for her birthday. But that's... Yeah, that's right. She'll... That would be a great one for me to take. Although, how the hell are they going to do a Paw Patrol movie for a, like a film length? I I think it might be the second Paw Patrol movie. Let me double check. Oh, sweet lord! Would, I saw a clip. I saw a clip recently where it was like, "This is the best movie scene of the year," and it was like a Paw Patrol mm. puppy like jumping away from an explosion <laughs> or something. Yeah, I yeah, I have me... I have huge issues with Paw Patrol. I really can't stand it. So there's Paw Patrol the movie, and then this is Paw Patrol the Mighty movie. So this is the second one that's theatrically released. Yeah, I have a real issue with Paw Patrol and other movies like it as like entertainment for children because, like, if you think about, I, I, I've thought about a lot about what was the entertainment for young children when I was growing up, like Thomas the Tank Engine and Postman Pat and like Fireman Sam and stuff like that. And you go back and watch the original versions of all of those, and they're just like kind of very. Um, we're just like normal life, like people just going about their everyday lives and mm-hmm. just kind of. Whereas these are dogs, little... and it's like, what the fuck? Well, but but like also that like it's teaching kids that like normal life is worth looking at and worth examining and worth kind mm. of like telling stories about. And now it's like, in order to make something for children, it's like dogs that can talk with special powers, and the and you know some stupid little thing will happen in the town, and you, you it's not like any of the adults or people around can actually just do their job and just fix it immediately. They've got to call this like special crack team of like fake dogs that have like they're special fake dogs. Well, they're not real dogs, are they? They don't behave like real I don't dogs. Know. I haven't seen it. Anyway, I, I you just cited think, Thomas the Tank Engine as something that you were like, it's normal life. You're like, this well, show's no, got talking yeah, yeah, dogs. Right. It's like, well, it's got talking trains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, I, I, oh, sorry, it's a, it's a particular comparison to the current Thomas the Tank Engine animated series, which is, I'm just going to use the term fucking insane. Um, like the original <laughs> Thomas the Tank Engine is like, I mean, yes, they talk, but it's like, models that are like i would say Mm. i think we should use the term stop motion incredibly lightly because it basically (laughs) nothing moves just between scenes they just they just rolled it on the on the rail (laughs) and then started filming it (laughs) exactly and then like they cut to another scene and the eyes have shifted direction so that's the you Mm. know like and so there's a sort of a slowness and a semi-reality to what Mm. they're representing and it's not really stop motion it's just stop <laughs> Please stop. Um, and then I watched like twenty seconds of the like Thomas the Tank Engine animated series, which is recently, and it's like literally Thomas like blasting his way around the world to like <laughs> Australia, and I'm just like, he's not even on tracks anymore. It's just ridiculous. Anyway, so yeah, I, they're I, off I, the rails. <laughs> you can always like, say that literally and figuratively. Thank you. I would if I was in charge of Thomas the Tank Engine. I'd be like, we're doing a new series called Thomas the Tank Engine Off the Rails. <laughs> he develops mm-hmm. a substance abuse problem. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so rounding out October, the month, the spooky season, as AJ would call it, is Saw Ten or Saw X. Not interested. Not going to see it. This is so stupid. It's like yeah. There's a, there's a quote about like because after Spiral came out, they were like, 
oh, there's going to be a 10th film. They're like, uh, just because we made Spiral, it doesn't mean Saw ceases to exist. Just because Spiral is here doesn't mean there won't be a Saw 9. This Spiral is not the ninth film in the Saw franchise. There could easily be a Saw 9 that follows Jigsaw. We're waiting to see how Spiral goes and how audiences respond to determine what happens next. Not long after that, they announced <laughs> Saw 10. <laughs> well, Saw X is kind of that, that ambiguity that allows them to be like, no, it's, it's not necessarily it's cool Saw 10. Yeah. It's just it's the cool letter. Yeah. This is just, it's crazy that they've ripped the whole marketing program directly off of iPhone. It's exactly what happened mm. on iPhone. They got up to eight and uh, then just went straight to iPhone I reckon, X. um... What did the eighth was Jigsaw? Friday the 13th uh, did it before <laughs> with Jason X. They beat the iPhone to it. Oh, no, yeah, but the iPhone yeah. skipped nine is the point. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. It's like literally exactly the same situation. Mm. Yeah, not excited for that. One, uh, we've got in November, we've got half a film coming out, Dune Part 2. Give it a bloody rest, Richard. (laughs) Come on. They're waiting for some kind of reaction from you, AJ. Jesus. Yeah, so Dune Part 2, now featuring Austin Butler doing this voice. (laughs) Please, somebody call the hospital. I can't stop doing this voice. (laughs) Yeah, um, and Florence Pugh's in it as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Awesome I'm, I'm not particularly excited for this film. Sick. Well, this half a film, I should cool. say. Cool. Screw yeah, you, man. Nice, Screw nice you, man. one, dude. Oh, God, kill a joke, Richard. <laughs> I think I just I the best thing about the Dune, first Dune movie is the cast and the people they've added to this cast. Isn't Christopher Walken playing the Emperor? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's playing the emperor that they like allude to in the first film. Shadam. Christopher Walken got cast as him. I think it's going to be great. I think it's going to be awesome. I will concede. Tim Blake Nelson's cast. Tim Blake cast? Nelson's cast. I would. I'll concede that they needed. To, and we talked about this on. <laughs> Look, I'll episode, concede it's half a film. <laughs> <laughs> that that this needed to come out. Like this needs to. Have, we should have been talking about this on every movie we saw in 2022. Like absolutely, this, this should have come out eight months after the first one. I but reckon, that's the but, studio's fault. Yeah. It's not the filmmaker's mm. fault. Absolutely, they absolutely should yeah, have Lord of the Rings this and just film, filmed the whole thing at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like this is. I, I'm sure it'll be good. Like Dune didn't resonate with me heaps. As I've you know I've made why not well what was wrong with it? <laughs> no, like e- even negating my half a movie joke it's just like it, it was just a bit too dense for me it, like I'm admitting that I'm too stupid for Dune and it's like and after watching the movie I enjoyed it but I did the the first thing I sort of thought coming out of it was like <sighs> I'm gonna have to watch that again for the second one aren't I <laughs> I watched it three <laughs> times when it came out. Dude, I if anyone said to me, "Hey man, you want to watch June?" I'd be like, "Yes, absolutely." I, I would watch it again and again. What's crazy about June is how little happens in the movie, and yet how much of a movie it is to me, for mm. me. Like, it's well, approximately fifty percent. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but like, yeah, and 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 again, it, it didn't. It was a it was a decent length movie. It didn't drag. And yet hardly anything happened in it. And I was so like, <gasps> I just want more as soon as it finished. And so, yes, it is half a movie. I was really annoyed about it being half a movie, but that didn't like lessen or even halve my enjoyment of it. I think watching it a second time made me enjoy it more because that when I watched it a second time, I didn't have to focus on where we were going or yes. what, what, how long I thought was left and like how, where to feel the trajectory was going. And knowing it ended where it did, I was able to just sort of enjoy the movie at a pace I wasn't aware of when I first watched it. Yeah, you knew, you um, knew where and, the ride was ending for that time. Yeah, and so I, I think I enjoyed it more the second time I watched it. Well, I guess you're a better man than I. I know. I've known that for a while, Richard. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay cool yeah great comeback <laughs> so are you guys excited for the hunger games the ballad of songbirds and snakes i don't oh, think i'll see this Legi- sweet, i legitimately don't think i'll see this sweet lord what is going on why so, what is what this a prequel on earth is, is it going a- on in the house of commons yeah this is the <laughs> the um a prequel yeah, about the president snow it's a sort of rise to power it's, it's based their, on it's their fantastic beasts mm. basically but oh. yeah they, they, they did she <laughs> the suzanne collins did release 
the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And it was it was one of those things that's like the book was kind of made so they could make another movie, it seems like. Mm. But yeah, Tom Blythe stars as Coriolanus Snow and Rachel Ziegler is the his sort of love interest. This is too late, right? Like this needed to come out five years ago. Mm. This is a five part TV show at best, right? Come on. <laughs> like Yeah. Big no one's going to the movies to watch this. Like all the people who were young enough to be excited about Hunger Games at the time it came out have now aged out of being excited about the Hunger Games. And also the Hunger Games was at the very start and peak of that kind of teenage like dystopian fiction kind of Mm. deal. And then all the other movies that came after it, including the Urgent um, series... (laughs) completely just exhausted whatever we had for it and so <laughs> thank you i just came up with that i'm really <laughs> I love that. i mean the thing is i'm sure there'll be many like tweets and stuff that have said it before but i i just i know that was the first uh, the first yeah the only person to have ever said urgent what does that word mean i think that like as it making fun of young adult movie adaptations used to be like the hottest thing you could do in pop cultural comedy you know like it used to be this astute observation and now it's like forgotten and we've moved on and it doesn't i don't i don't want to return to 2012 i want to travel valiantly forth out of this fucking pandemic <laughs> When people were watching Hunger Games, was was the main question in their head, but how did it turn into a dystopia? How did they get from normal yeah, life? I actually did just... wonder that. There, oh, there was okay, probably well. my, my main question coming out of it, yeah. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. I'm just being a foil. Are you just joshing with me? You're just joshing? Yeah. I'm just joshing. Hey, come yeah. on. It's yeah. like, so, hey, come on, I everyone, got a kid over in, here. In, in, instead of an inspiring story of how people ro- rise above conflict and um and succeed, or maybe don't in the case of the end of the Hunger Games, w- let's let's focus on a time when things were actually really great and then they all got fucked up and leave you at the end of that. <laughs> well, I think that the, the, to be fair, this isn't like how it became a dystopia. The This is set during the 10th Hunger Games. So it's like this: the Hunger Games already exists. The district system, I think, already oh, exists. Oh, right, okay. Ah, oh, well, how did they get to this dystopia? Well, that was my <laughs> question, too. Well, that, so wait, well, it's one thing just I, like more Hunger Games. Uh, yeah, I think so. I don't know. But it, it is... Hunger Games, but now the villain can be the main character yeah. for some reason. Snow White and the Huntsman vibes. Mm. <laughs> and funnily enough, Rachel Ziegler is also playing Snow White. But the, I will say on the Hunger Games, Catching Fire is so fucking good. Like it's it's in, it's insane how good. It's Catching half Fire. a movie, but I can understand why you might think that. <laughs> it's yeah, no, nah, the I mean, Mockingjay Part One is half a movie, and it's terrible. And Mockingjay Part Two is even worse. First Hunger Games is fine, but Catching Fire is like a masterpiece. <laughs> okay. I can't wait to cover that for the for the podcast because I have a lot to say about Catch a Fire. Trolls 3, some places are calling this Trolls Band Together. It's, you know, the I kept on referring to Trolls World Tour as like the film that changed cinema. You? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it changed me as a person. Um, but yeah, so now this is going back to theatrical release because Trolls World Tour was one of the first ones to be like, fuck it, chuck it straight on streaming and... Fuck it. Chuck it. Sorry. <laughs> and that kind of, it did change the way that we look at the relationship between cinemas and streaming. And I think that, you know, a, a, one film had to break that you know, to be the first and it just happened to be Trolls. But yeah. Wish. This is new uh, Disney's new film. This is So this is about the when you wish upon a star star, mm. right? It's like that star is actually a character or something or other. It's yes, very, it's I believe like another this is, Disney eats itself kind of movie. Yeah, this is the hundredth anniversary Disney movie. I think is like oh my the, gosh. Point, the the sort of point of it. And and this isn't a short film before the main feature. Yeah. So so Wish asks the question: How did the wishing star upon which so many ca- Disney characters wished to be wished come to be? Set in the magical kingdom of roses, the story introduces Asher, voices a voice of Arania, uh, Ariana Debose, an optimist with a sharp wit who deeply cares about her community. When Asher turns 
to the sky in a moment of need and makes a wish. Her plea is answered by a cosmic force, a little ball of boundless energy called Star. Together they face the most formidable foes to save her community and prove that when the will of one courageous human connects with the magic of the stars, wondrous things can happen. And Alan Tudyk is being cast in it, not as Star, but... Um, yeah. Although I actually Star appears in the credits for Strange World. But unfortunately, no one saw that. I think this could be fine. I think it could be good. Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't. I haven't really disliked a Disney, a modern Disney princess story. Really, Frozen Two was kind of average, but I liked mm. all the rest of them. So I, I, I feel like it'd be very easy to be cynical about this. But it's like whatever. It could be good. Mm. I, let's see I'm a trailer. So bored. Yeah. I'm so bored by the description. But hey, let's see. Yeah. So. December brings us so we're we're into the last month of the year and then we've got a few why actually another one of these classic things that in the time since making this list and talking about it Netflix released their slate with actual dates so we can go through (laughs) just quickly Netflix's year of films and then we can um and then go over some other ones that are undated so Wonka comes out in December a film which Oh God, I would be so cynical about and you know, oh dreading. But Paul King, who directed the Paddington movies, is directing it, and I'm like, ah, nah, oh. Paul. So it's a yeah, Timothy don't. Chalamet led Wonka prequel. Again, sounds like a Thirty Rock Arrested mm. Development joke. Yeah, like and that that and it's a musical. Timothy Chalamet well. to to guest star in the episode. Mm. You know, yeah. The, yeah. the really interesting thing about this is I wonder how accurate they're going to be to the Wonka story of basically going and colonizing Oompa Loompas and bringing them back <laughs> to, to work as slaves in his factory. You know what? You know what they're going to call this, Jeremy? They're, just, they're going to call it Woka. Because it's going gonna, gonna, gonna to be a, it's gonna, a, a woke. Well, I, I'm trying to, in my head, I'm like, am I making a joke that it's going to be like Joker mm. or am I making a joke that it's going to be a woke Wonka? The first, second one was my original idea, but maybe I would rather this was Wonka. Yeah, like, a villain origin Joker. story. Like a sort of yeah, horror yeah. story of like a whole people group being torn from their home and being forced to work to make chocolate. Show me that, Paul King, you wholesome <laughs> motherfucker. I bet you can't do it. I bet you can't show me a harrowing tale. <laughs> All I can say is that they can't ruin... They, 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 it'll be hard for them to ruin Wonka in the way it, it, worse than they did with Matilda. <laughs> well, it's, it's like, how hot of a property is Wonka? Like, clearly more than I expected that it's that like it's being resurrected for another go. Well, you know what I, I mean? mean like, Roald, I, Roald Dahl is now its own production company. So the Roald Dahl yeah, company... Like at the beginning of the oh, Matilda, really? fi- yeah, the beginning of the Matilda film, there was like a, a production company, like mm. you know, the credit, like screen credit of. Like, I, the I believe Dahl that's company. a Netflix like um, collaboration they're doing. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, so this is separate to that. I I, I want to say yes, so I will mm. confidently. Mm. Also in December, this is I think this year's. It's interesting because th- this year is our first. Oh, I mean, I guess last no so 2021 the big december release i guess was like west side story kind of that was the this we, we, the bit of a dry patch but you know then, then last year we had avatar way of water this year there's like a few it's like which you know but the color purple this like is an adaptation of the musical based on the novel which steven spielberg adapted in 1985 i didn't know this was so this is oh fantasia Oh my god, Fantasia's starring in this. Remember fit like Fantasia Barino? Yeah, she Fantasia Barino. Third, se- yeah. third season of oh, American Idol. I thought you were Idol. saying there was gonna be a, a new Fantasia movie. Do you do you started. legit remember Fantasia Barino, Jeremy, or were you making fun of me? <laughs> no, I literally just said her her last name as you said her last name. Like okay, I, yeah. I, I I thought you were just entire... being like you've been really on my toes with it, but I finished the sprite, everyone. No, no, no. Fantasia Barino. Like, I, yeah. I remember her. I watched that whole season of That's American Idol. So crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. so interesting. She said, like, she's still, like, kind of, you know, she would be a guest on, like, the Kelly Clarkson show during the daytime in America when they're, like, a bit dry for guests. You know, mm. she's, st- she's sort of been doing stuff in America, but it's not mm. culturally big enough for it to make it to New Zealand. And so when you have to assemble, like, a group of people who, like, have a name that 
white boomers will remember like we just remembered Fantasia Barino <laughs> <laughs> to open yeah. a movie that you want to like go really big in December you and and also you're not sacrificing the quality of the singing in the show um although mm. acting yeah, who knows she I just think she played uh, the lead role on Broadway so Oh yeah, good times. But well, you know, that's actually no guarantee of acting, though. Because oh no, no, yeah, absolutely not. But yeah, that's yeah, yeah. where she. But yes, yeah, so no, interesting. Yeah, this this will be a big Oscar contender, I imagine. Who's directing it? This is uh, Blitz Mazzule, who is a Ghanaian rapper. Does he? He directed The Burial of Kojo and Black Is King, the visual album by Beyonce for Lion King. Interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. This 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 could be a, you know, they think this this will be one that's potentially dominating conversations later in the year. But we'll see. Ghostbusters Afterlife is getting a sequel. It's so interesting, eh? How long it took for Ghostbusters to get revived? Like two of the lead creatives involved died, and now they've like now they're cranking out another one. Mm. I think that's so interesting. Like, where was this proactivity? 20 years ago when everyone was still alive yeah there's well it's probably easier to get it done uh, without after them. they died yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's probably a good point <laughs> yeah apparently it, it's it's very early days of this ernie hudson was on the show on the kelly clarkson's show and a few weeks ago and said briefly commented on the movie didn't say let's see if it has what he actually said oh no i have to watch the youtube video i'm not gonna do that so yeah, interesting. Can't believe the Kelly Clarkson show has come up twice in a row. Yeah. Well, she's like, Who would have thought? she's kind of come in there in the vacuum that Ellen has left. Mm. Like, there's, yeah, she's, the Kelly Clarkson show has been, yeah, it, it, it came up during the pandemic. She really sort of started to have moments that were, you know, talked about um, on YouTube mm. and stuff. And then, I don't know if you guys saw, she did an interview with Machine Gun Kelly. Um, Oh yeah, did say uh, that. painting each other's nails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, mm. he basically just was like, "I, I feel a lot of." Pre-. It was just, it was quite sweet actually. Like he was like, "I feel a lot of pressure to be a famous person that people want to meet and to like rise to the moment and mm. kind of perform a version of myself that people will think is good and interesting." And some days I just don't have it in me and I don't want to do that. And today's one of those days. And like the way that she, oh no, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not, no, no, no. It was, that was, um, that was Drew Barrymore. the Drew Barrymore show. Yeah, it was a Drew Barrymore show, which. Oh my God, I was so fucking invested in that story. And now I've been like, <laughs> Kelly Clarkson and Drew Barrymore. Rooted from it. Sorry. And anyway, the, the ending to that is that Drew Barrymore, um, they were like painting each other's um, fingernails while he was talking about this. And she just did such an incredible job of being like, not giving like a pat answer, but actually just really reflecting back to him how she has understood how she understands mm. that and how and ga- gave experiences in her life when she felt the same way and basically said i i just want you to know that you don't have to be anything just being here in your presence is enough and we're just excited to be with you regardless of what you're going through and it was just really really wonderful mm. It makes sense anyway. that that was Drew Barrymore and not Kelly Clarkson because if someone said to Kelly Clarkson, I, I feel a lot of pressure to be a famous person, Kelly Clarkson would be like, oh, yeah, I used to have that 10 mm. years ago. <laughs> oh, come that come so stand in this booth and sing <laughs> songs and don't forget the lyrics so you get sprayed with water. That's what <laughs> Kelly Clarkson would say. So there's a film called wow. Migration, which is about a, a family of ducks trying to convince their overprotective father to go on the vacation of a lifetime. It's directed by benjamin renner who made ernest and uh, celestine which was like a well isn't that like a beautiful french film years ago and it's being written by mike white who people obviously will know as ned schneebly from school of rock <laughs> and he also has one scene in zombie Land. so this is a a animated animated film, film? Yeah. do we know what type of animation no do we know what studio is making it studio ghibli it's not really no let's it's very very little details on it please don't say like a say like a i'll take a like a illumination oh, sorry like a oh, illumination that's so much worse than like a <laughs> it is illumination right. <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's gonna be a wacky duck character one of the ducks is gonna be wacky i just know it mm. have they made is good this- films Mike White, 
Is Mike White's White Lotus, right? Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. Um, Illumination's doing the Super Mario Bros. movie. I know. What a what a weird what a weird pivot for him. Mm. Well, I mean, Craig Mazin, who did Chernobyl and um, Last of Us, had a weird pivot, a similar sort of thing. That's like being a. Oh, I think Craig Mazin's was a lot more intense than Mike White's <laughs> comedy actor turned like dramatic writer. Whereas Craig Mazin's like from two of the six writers of Scary Movie Three. <laughs> mm comes the last of us <laughs> i guess there's also the happy feet two of it all with um with old george yeah and babe pig in the yeah, city old old george emphasis on old yeah yeah, yeah true yeah. so the final film that's we have to talk about in terms of theatrical releases is anyone want to guess it june part three it's the third <laughs> half of june if only uh aquaman the lost kingdom Ah, yes, a December release. Yep, and after that, we can all pretend these movies never happened. Yeah. You guys excited As for the it? DCEU intends. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'll go see it, probably. I'll see what it what it feels like when the trailer comes out. And I mean, I'll probably see it regardless, won't mm. I? Like, it feels like a pretty big movie, but wasn't wasn't blown away. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. This, this, it's directed by James Wan again. And there was it's one of those things that's some really... There was some really fascinating stuff in the first one, but it was just overall kind of a messy film. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I barely ever think about that first film. Yeah. I, I, I'm so. I don't know. I, I don't think I'll ever be excited for a superhero movie for the rest of my life. I reckon that's the stance I'm taking. Right. That's the challenge other superhero movies have to overcome now for okay. me to, to. What about uh, the Batman be two? You're not going to be excited nah, about the Batman 2? I'll see it and maybe it'll be real good. But wow. No, yeah, the fact I'm, that the fact stance. that it's a super the fact that it's a superhero movie does not like give it extra cachet in your mind. In fact, it probably Absolutely. plays against it. Now. Absolutely, Jeremy. Cachet. It, I was just about to say it plays against the cachet in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> But so this right is me for this is game. me compl- <laughs> this is me complimenting your vocabulary not making fun of you i'm sure Thank they you. feel very close together no 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 no, no. <laughs> i know so we are at the end of the That's year it. now but we do have a few netflix and other films to go through so i know just on other one of the main ones on another streaming service we'll want to talk about is killers of the flower moon which is the martin scorsese film coming to apple mm-hmm. tv plus it's yeah, uh, stars. Did Leonardo we not DiCaprio. talk about this last year? Okay, so how many times? How many, <laughs> but seriously, like, do you guys feel this? This like weird problem with doing these yearly podcasts is like some films get pushed back every year for five years, yeah. and so it feels like like it felt like we were talking about like um I don't know what's an example of a film that took ages to to come out. Um, Chaos Walking. Yeah, we were talking about for years. Okay. The whale, I feel like we were talking about for years. Mm. Oh, the um, the uh, the mutants one, the mutants, horror film yeah. that was like the young mutants or whatever it was. Yeah, the young mutants. Mm, yeah, that's yeah, all. yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the actual title. <laughs> it's called new, mutants. No, new, new mutants. Oh, new mutants. So right, yeah, yeah. we've, uh, yeah, I mean, kills a flower moon. It'll be a big Oscar contender, I'm sure. There's poor. By things, the way, I just yeah. I want to I want to make a I want to make a new addition to the the um the tropes of this particular group of podcasts for us Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and by the way uh pin in it uh totally forgot to say aj uh at gran turismo is this the film to break the video game (laughs) thank you my god i nearly (laughs) threw up when we moved to the next film and you hadn't said that yet um but i have to say that uh killers of the flower moon will this be the piece of media that gets jeremy to finally get an apple tv plus subscription mm. Mm. probably not i'm like i'm i'm toying with it because of um severance i really want to watch yeah uh, I, oh, I also ted, really want to watch Lasso's, Severance, but i just ted lasso is fucking amazing i just have amazing. such a such a thing about for some reason apple tv plus is the one that's like that's one too many I, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm not. I, I I'm not going to go there. I, I got rid of Apple. I've got rid of Prime Video, and now yeah. yeah. Maybe I have a room in my heart for another streaming service. Wow. <laughs> AJ, have you ever had Apple TV Plus? No. Uh, on your PS5, you get six free months. Oh, cool. Yeah. Like yeah. that's. I've I've had Apple TV Plus since it started. I don't think I've ever paid for it. And I actually Apple TV 
plus got in touch with me and said we'd love to give you a free subscription so now i don't have to pay for it anymore um wait is this because of your is this because of your role at tvnz yeah, yeah Apple tv oh, oh, like him. Got in touch with me. i don't know if i'm supposed to say that i don't know i'm still still working out the uh, being an influencer so <laughs> <laughs> poor thing you just have to say you just have to say hashtag ad um, you say yeah, hashtag, yeah, ad. hashtag ad yeah so <laughs> poor things is a new film from yorgos lanthimos who's made like the lobster and the favorite the favorite yeah he it's about upon drowning herself to escape her abusive husband a woman has her brain replaced with the brain of her unborn child with the help of her father it stars emma what? stone as the main character willem dafoe as her father and also Yo. stars mark ruffalo that's out that's that's shot right up there for me for that sounds awesome yeah i didn't know anything about it <laughs> that sounds either awesome or the worst thing i'm gonna see this year but i'm definitely gonna oh, see yeah, it like de- deeply uncomfortable mm. yeah, yeah well it's also the kind of thing probably won't come out in new zealand <laughs> there's ferrari coming out which is i believe michael mann let me double check that i think so it stars adam driver as enzo ferrari oh, if you search driver 20 if you search ferrari 2023 it just gives you up like the latest models of Ferrari. <laughs> imagine if imagine if the the character poster for Ferrari just has like driver Ferra- Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, yeah. It's follows the line it's a biopic about Enzo Ferrari starring Adam Driver, directed by Michael Mann. Probably a Oscar y sort of one, be out in the end of the How year. How is this different from Rush? That they're completely different, I guess, would be that they don't oh, share any similarities, probably. True stories about driving people. Well, Enzo Ferrari isn't a racer. Oh, that's true. Yes. Well, he was actually. He Well, he was actually, technically, but... <laughs> <laughs> They're moving. They're moving through the sort of. They're moving through the Italian family the, name. Yeah, this is companies. more of a. This is this Gucci, is, Ferrari. Pretty, yeah, I was gonna say this probably has more, a lot more in common with House of Gucci. I imagine yeah. you were on his on Ferrari's Wikipedia page, and you were like, "Enzo Ferrari's not a racer." As you're reading, Enzo Ferrari was a philanthropist, inventor, and it's like all of these things, and then and a racer. <laughs> oh, wait, yes, yes. <laughs> So, also on Apple TV Plus as well this year, Ridley Scott's Napoleon film, which has been long gestating project with Joaquin Phoenix playing Napoleon. There's oh, wow. uh, a, 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 a friend of mine who I mentioned last week worked on this film, and I know a couple of the set pieces, but I shan't reveal any more. But yeah, no, th- yeah, this is just every time. Know. Every time your friend who listens to this podcast hears you say those things, I just imagine them being like, "Oh fuck, Richard, no, 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 no." <laughs> no, they messaged me this morning um, and revealed that the the spoiler <laughs> that they gave me about Indiana Jones Five was not based on anything. <laughs> so it's not actually a spoiler for the film. I still won't reveal it because it, I, I, it might come true, but. Um, yeah, it's just very funny. <laughs> you you told me it, and I don't think, I don't think there's any reason based on why she said this to assume that it's true. If given oh, the information yeah. she had being false information, I think you can probably say it and it not be a spoiler because it's not like people are are guessing it already. Yeah, well, that's for the listeners to decide. So <laughs> okay. I think now we I'm can just on on Napoleon. On to- um. Sorry, just on Napoleon. Vanessa Kirby is the the lead um the lead female actress and mm. man, woof, that is cool casting. Like Vanessa Kirby and Joaquin Phoenix, for some reason I am all in on watching that. <laughs> nice. Also, uh last one for Apple TV Plus actually. Argyle is a upcoming spy film directed by Matthew Vaughan. So it's just an interesting one to see. You know, he's been doing Kingsman films for a while, so it's cool to see him doing something else. Uh, stars Henry yeah. Cavill, Sam Rockwell, Bryce Dallas Howard, Brian Cranston, Catherine O'Hara, John Cena, Samuel Jackson, Dua Lipa, Ariana DeBose, Rob Delaney, and Jing Lucy. God, between wow. this Oppenheimer and um, what was that other film <laughs> that I said? Oh, uh, Haunting. No. Mm. The other film you Haunted said that Mansion. had a bunch of cast members. No, <laughs> it was the haunting of the Christie one, but it wasn't that. It was a different one. Anyway, I was going to make a joke about how every actor's going to be in everything this year. Hmm. Imagine if every actor was in a film one year. Wow, that'd be crazy. 
But Maybe nuts. you know they're, they're It'll lo- probably they're be the fun. next Benoit Blanc movie. Apparently, this is based on a yet to be released novel by first time author Ellie Conway, who Hollywood Reporter doesn't think she exists. There's been okay. There's um. There's been the, unable to uh, contact her, her publicist, and her talent agent. The only evidence of her existence is an Instagram account with no posts and a two-line bio that says she re- resides in the US, um, and her name is spelt differently on the publisher website. <laughs> but it's supposed to be Very the first in a franchise this of at least three films. Smacks of a PR campaign trying to make it mysterious, which yeah. I'm going to ignore studiously. All right, so let's go through the films and uh are coming out on netflix so we've already had a couple i mentioned the you people but i'm just i'm this is an article with all of them i'm going to <laughs> i'm going to pick and choose as i go down the list there's we have a ghost about which is has a very funny looking picture released from it which is anthony mackie being like hey come on and behind him is a balding david harbour with a face that's like oh don't tell him i'm a ghost so that's a very uh, let, the, you, let your brain do things out. That comes out on February 24th. There's Murder Mystery 2. Anna Sandler and Jennifer Aniston return to reprise their roles in the sequel to Murder Mystery. Let's see if this has a star-studded cast. It does not. Anyway, the <laughs> you also have The Mother, which is the Jennifer Lopez is, had, you know, entering her Liam Neeson era. Of a fe- deadly female assassin. Hasn't she got oh, a, uh, a movie coming out called like Shock on It's Wedding out now. It's on Prime Video. Oh, nice. What would be great about The Mother is if it had an exclamation point at the end of it and it was like some kind of like spiritual sequel to Mother. Yeah, it's like this. It's like the Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> the reboot. So there's Extraction 2. Chris Hemsworth comes back after explicitly dying in the first one. And <laughs> they cloned Tyrone which is John Boyega, Jamie Foxx, and Tiana Paris. And that one, I think, is getting some quite good reviews already. It was like at a, at a yeah, film festival. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah, that one I'm interested in. Gal Gadot stars in Heart of Stone, August 11th. There's also Lift, which is about... <laughs> Kevin Hart headlines this movie about an international heist crew that is recruited to prevent a terrorist attack and must pull off the heist on a plane mid-flight. Very Kevin Hart. Yeah. There's Pain Hustlers. This is Emily Blunt and Chris Evans headline this crime drama based on the Evan Hughes's New York Times magazine article. That's interesting. There's also Damsel, which is Millie Bobby Brown stars in a fantasy epic. Epic. Now that's what Mm. I call epic. There's uh, Leo, which is an animated movie about the last year of a class in elementary school told from the viewpoint of the class pet featuring voices of Adam Sandler and Bill Burr. That that is such an interesting way to read me that synopsis because it starts out sounding really cool and then by the end I don't really want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a family affair, which is a Zac Efron and Nicole Kidman romance movie. Interesting pairing. Oh, one that I actually very sexy. do have marked as my one of my most anticipated is The Killer, which appeared on our list last year, but that's now getting had a, has a release date of November 10th. This is David Finch's adaptation of a graphic novel starring Michael Fassbender, and I believe the information we had about, oh fuck, it's raining in my windows. <laughs> <laughs> it was seamless. That was so seamless. <laughs> the... Yeah, it's like a, a an assassin who develops a conscience, I think, was like the, the log line of it. Netflix did a um, boom, 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 releasing a bunch of their films coming out this year. And I remember they did that a couple of years ago. And it was interesting seeing the what their big, you know, like th- that year they finished it with Don't Look Up. And it was like this reveal, hey, this is going to be our big flagship film this year. And so the main reason I watched this trailer, I was like, well, what's going to be their big December release? Actually, last year it was Glass Onion. And it's like, you know, what's going to be there? Just We'll just give you a little tease for this. And right at the end of the trailer, they have a very brief clip of Rebel Moon. The Zack Snyder. Which is Zack Snyder's. Uh, this was a film that he... It's a sci-fi fantasy epic, which he... Before The Force Awakens, before the Disney acquisition of Lucasfilm, he wrote this as a Seven Samurai-inspired star wars spec script and is now taken the star wars name off it and has 
adapted it uh, as his own. And I tell you what, I'm probably more excited for this than I would be for a new Star Wars film. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm also, cool. you know, I'm not particularly excited for it. I mean, I think I think Zack Snyder, at the very least, is an interesting director to like look at his career. I never watched Army of the Dead, so do <laughs> that what you will. But yeah, I don't know. Rebel Moon could be interesting. Mm. Agreed. I like how it's just unabashedly like a Star Wars clone. Mm. It's like, we're not going to beat around the bush. Like every time I've heard Rebel Moon be talked about over the last few years, it's been in the same breath as Star Wars. Mm. There's, and then there's some undated ones still. The main one I'm actually interested for is Spaceman, which is Adam Sandler stars. It's an adaptation of Spaceman of Bohemia. Fuck, he's doing a lot this year. Yeah, it's about an astronaut sent to the edge of the galaxy and coming across a sentient spider. And this, it's being directed by... Oh my God, by, it's, that sounds like David Lynch. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's directed by Johan Rink, who did Chernobyl. And right. yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm just... This is one I'm very intrigued by. It's like potentially, how far would you go to escape your past? And it looks like it's a very different role for him. I think Adam Sandler's at an interesting place in his career now that he's, you know, you know, had the sort of bit of Oscar buzz with Uncut Gems, and I think he maybe liked doing that kind of role hmm. a bit more. A couple more to go through, unfortunately. Best Christmas ever. This is coming to us from Mary Lambert, who uh, made, who directed Castle for Christmas. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. But so it not does much. not. But- Wait, are you just telling us the Netflix movies now? <laughs> well, that's that's one that I've got. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm disappointed to hear that that because I think the name of that, the title of that film, does not sound to me like it's the sequel to Castle for Christmas. Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry. Castle for Christmas is different to night before christmas which is the one netflix christmas movie that i demand a sequel Do you want to a sequel because to, it, yeah. it it had it had in it the the um the the rumblings of a full universe connection for the um hudgens verse mm, yeah, yeah the netflix miss hudgens verse and um <laughs> unfortunately i don't think we're gonna get it yeah there's chicken run dawn of the nugget is finally actually coming out this year sequel to chicken run obviously the teaser image Finally. for it features rocky and oh, oh my god guess who's playing rocky <laughs> yeah it's zachary levi oh my god that's so <laughs> funny they recast mel gibson with zachary levi <laughs> oh no yeah so the uh, a ginger yeah rocky and ginger looking at and tandaway newton's playing ginger as well now they replaced the original actress uh, which she said was ageism. Uh, but it features them looking oh. at a... I mean, the chickens would be dead by now. Yeah. It's seeing a chicken foot cracking out of an egg. So maybe they have kids. One that, again, I think will be a big Oscar player, Maestro, which is Bradley Cooper directing and starring in a biopic about Leonard Bernstein. And yeah, this is... Uh, I think, did I write this down? Yeah, so it's... Directed by Bradley Cooper. It's produced by Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, and Todd Phillips, which is an interesting trio of people. I mean, Todd Phillips, obviously, mm. less than the other two, but to have those three people backing your project is like pretty impressive. Yeah, really. One actually that AJ, I think you marked as your most anticipated, or one of your most anticipated, is a Wes Anderson Roald Dahl adaptation, supposedly coming out this year. I believe it is stop motion. It's, it says it's untitled here on this Netflix website. I read it as being the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. And I think that it's... Oh, man. Like, it's it might, it's going to be a few... Like, the, the yeah. wonderful story of Henry Sugar is a short story it's collection. It's an anthology. Yeah, anthology. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's going to be doing that. And Benedict Cumberbatch, Ben Kingsley, Ray Fiennes, Dev Patel are already on board. Oh, man. Sign me up. I was read a story from it when I was 12 years old about a guy who could learn to see through things. Yeah. And it was very compelling, and I've never reread it, but I would very much uh, like to see that adapted on film. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I mean, actually, maybe it's even not even stop motion but yeah who knows i think wes anderson and roald dahl are a really interesting pairing Match made and in i heaven. think it's gonna be great well yeah. fantastic mr fox is probably my favorite wes yeah anderson it was film. really good but what's really interesting about fantastic mr fox is that it's probably one of the least roald dahl 
stories mm. it's it's it taps into a very different side of Roald Dahl than a lot of his more famous I'd say Fantastic Mr. Fox is kind of sits for me separate to a lot of the rest of the Roald Dahl canon canon yeah. yes and yeah Henry Sugar such a great call that's mm. awesome is that it is that, that the, the is of the list it. wow we thank you very much for listening everyone i hope you had fun listening to us say two or three things about movies that might come out in november <laughs> of 2023 um and if you enjoyed it please uh let us know uh, your let i keep forgetting to say this let us know your thoughts on our thoughts and you can do this over on the discord which there'll be a link to in the show notes and if you want to support us at other places you can you can follow Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Cold Popshire. And you can also uh, donate to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Cold Popshire as well if you want to see some cool stuff and get exclusive podcasts uh, and also contribute to the post credit scene, which is coming at you after this music ends. Gentlemen, as always, it's been a pleasure. Uh, what are your, what's the, what's the crown, the, what's the crowned most anticipated film of the year for you? Guys? Rebel Moon. Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Jeremy? Um, I'm going to say uh, June 2, definitely. Yeah, I'm going to say Henry Sugar because it's the last one we talked about. All right, everybody, thank you so much for listening and we'll be back next week. What are we talking about next week, Richard? We're going to swap out Jeremy for one of our other friends yeah. and talk about a little ceremony <laughs> called the Oscars, I believe it's pronounced. Yeah, I think you're being deliberately facetious and you know it's actually... I think you're not letting me ever have fun. Okay. Leave me have fun. Well, maybe we can have some fun in the post credit scene coming up right after these messages. These messages <laughs> this is just to the end of the music. <laughs> Welcome along to the post credit scene. This is a segment of the end of each episode. Review, donate $5 or more over at patreon.com slash Cole Pops. You get to give us something to talk about in this, the post credit scene. Richard and Jeremy, who's it from and what is it? Well, this one comes to us from uh, Greg Buchold, who, Greg, send in how to pronounce your last name. I, I, I'm, I'm worried <laughs> I've been butchering it this whole time. Uh... Who says, which possible afterlife scenario scares you more? When you die, there's just a void afterlife atheism. When you die, you just do it all again from the beginning forever, eternal recurrence. Or you never die, you always perceive a possible universe in which you survive forever, quantum immortality. Uh, as someone <laughs> raised in a, through a very particular set of beliefs, I can definitively say that uh, going to hell is, the, sca- is mm. the afterlife that scares me the most. I was raised with a very particular set of beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> beliefs that make hell a nightmare for someone like me <laughs> i don't know i i might have spoken about this before but i just randomly i will be going about my day and i will fear death immensely for about three minutes <laughs> and, and like the idea of, uh, the idea of just i remember it happened when i was watching knives out and when spoilers for knives out um it, it, the character at the center of the murder mystery dies. Well, it, it, well, it, it actually is a spoiler when he slits his own throat, and that he, right. um, that that moment, I was like, oh my god, he's he's dying. I'm go- he, there's just nothing for him after this moment. That's going to happen to me one day, and I got over it. But and then sometimes you know I can't fucking wait for death. But the. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I actually don't know what, what scares me more. And I think that, you know, ask me again on my deathbed, I will probably be able to give you an answer. But for now, I th- I think maybe... Bec- I, I feel like I'm, I was never raised with any sort of beliefs about an afterlife. And so I think I've always just accepted that there is nothing when you die. And that's just it, which is, you know, our human brains can't really comprehend the idea of not existing, I don't think. And... But or any any idea other than that, I kind of take as a a bit less scary than that. Even though that's the one I've become. So it's like I'm my my base level zero, and is like nothing. And so anything other than that is slightly more interesting. So I guess that by default makes the void mm. the scariest version for me. We've been talking about this for long enough for me to start feeling existentially dreadful. Mm. Um, Jeremy, Jeremy <laughs> is your most most feared afterlife just all of the Hunger Games movies on repeat and you're stuck <laughs> there and you can't move? <laughs>
<laughs> um, no, it's really, it's, it's quite funny because, well, not funny. It's fitting that I'm here for this question because, man, I tell you what, the evenings when I was a child that I would lie awake at night and literally go, I'd try to imagine, like, because I, you know, grew up Christian and so try to imagine living forever in heaven and just being like, what? It's scarier what, than hell. <laughs> what what <laughs> happens? What happens when you just keep existing and there's no yeah. end to your existence I, and there's I can't no. Guys. And, and and then but then I, I would try to can't imagine talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, pull off your headphones, bro, pull off your headphones. And then I but then I would try to Im- I have to listen to this again. <laughs> <laughs> can we get AJ, can we get an emotional support dog or something to come and sit with you while you while you edit this episode? <laughs> I've got my empty cans of Sprite. Mm. What a symbol for my life. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, basically, I could never quite decide whether or not existing or not existing forever was harder to con- conceive of and therefore scarier. Mm. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Well, if you excuse me, Ron, I'm going to go like have a panic pour attack. a glass of water on my face and have a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> go outside All and right. touch the grass. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>